Welcome to our lecture online. Now, how do we find the temperature at the boundary between two layers in a cylinder? Well, that's what we're about to find out in this video. Again, in the previous videos, we found the general equation for a multi-layer, in this case, a two-layered cylinder. And in the example, with the specific information that we got, we found in the previous video that the heat flow is 4,245 watts. Now, what is the temperature at the boundary between the inside and the outside la uh, uh, layer? And notice that the heat conductivity constant is quite large for the inside layer. Presumably, that's a metal. And the constant heat conductivity constant for the second layer is quite small. We presume that's an insulator. Remember that we said that the heat flow to the first layer must equal the heat flow to the second layer, which is simply the heat flow through the entire cylinder. So that's true. What we can say then is that Q1, if we then separate the heat flow to each layer, we can say that Q1 or Q.1 is going to be equal to the difference in the temperature between the inside and the boundary. So that would be, in this case, uh, TA minus TC, and of course that's what we're looking for, the difference in the temperature, divided by the natural log of, in this case that's going to be equal to C over A, divided by 2 pi K1L. And so if that's true, and of course that is what we found before, we can then take the delta T here, the delta T between layers A and C, which is equal to TA minus TC, is equal to Q dot 1, which is the same as Q dot, times the heat resistance, which is the natural log of C over A, divided by 2 pi K1L. And so all we have to do is to find the delta temperature between the inside and the boundary between the two layers is to solve for this equation. So that's equal to Q dot 1 is going to be the same as Q dot, which is 4,245 watts, multiplied times the natural log of C over A, that would be 10 over 5, divided by 2 pi times K1, and K1 is going to be 20 watts per meter times centigrade degrees, and L is going to be 2 meters. And that is equal to, of course, again, we need a calculator. So we have the natural log of 2 divided by 2 divided by pi and divided by 40 equals multiplied times 4,245 watts. And we get 11.7 centigrade degrees, 11.7 centigrade degrees. Well, let's see here. If we know the delta and we know the inside temperature, that means from that equation we can say that Tc is equal to Ta minus the delta temperature from A to C. And so since the inside temperature was 500 degrees centigrade and we subtract from that 11.7 centigrade degrees, that means that the temperature at the boundary must be 483 degrees centigrade. So that would be Tc. Let's see here if I add that 11. Yes, that would be correct. All right. Now we can say we're satisfied with that and we don't need to go any further. Or what we can do is we can calculate the same for the other side, for the second layer, and work ourselves backwards from the outside temperature to see if we get the same results. So that's a good check. So let's find that the delta T from uh, from C to B is going to be equal to, that would be T, uh, C minus TB, the boundary temperature minus the outside temperature, which is equal to Q2 dot, which is the same, 4,245 watts, times the natural log of 20 over 10, divided by 2 pi, times 0 0.5 watts per meter centigrade degrees, times 2 meters. Oh, that should be in the denominator, shouldn't it? Okay, let's get rid of that. Here we go, there we go, 2 meters in the denominator, like that, which is equal to, so let's independently find the other result. 
So in other words, that would be the same, 11.7 degrees, but now instead of dividing by 40, we divide by 1, which means we multiply times 40 equals, which gives us 468.3 degrees centigrade. 468.3 centigrade degrees. And so now we can say is that T at C is equal to T at B, that's the outside temperature, plus the delta T, the delta T from C to B. So in this case, T sub C is equal to the 20 degrees centigrade plus the delta of 468.3 centigrade degrees. And so T is at C is equal to 488.3 degrees centigrade. And notice we get the exact same result which gives us comfort that we probably did it correctly, and that is how it's done.